Good afternoon and welcome to episode number 604. Today's topic is why it's okay, even good, to be single. And yeah, I'm going to dive into that one with some fun in a moment. But before, I do that, before I do that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about, and where we might go with this. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And that's what inspired these talks started back in December, October, before last, two, over two years ago, in figure out the math, which is why I'm now up to episode number 603. And these are called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic, as I do a lot of talks about love and relationships, I figure let me just do one the other direction for a second, which is why it's okay or even good to be single. There's a lot of talk, and, and being a relationship coach, relationship attraction expert, what do you, whatever the title seems to be morphing into, the direction seems to be towards relationship, and that's sort of my focus, and a lot from my clients, and a lot of people I talk to are always looking for love. And I've talked oftentimes about looking for love in all the wrong places, which is one of the reasons why being single can be a good thing. But I want to speak to something else, and that's choosing into relationship when you are ready, and when you know what you want, because those are two different things. And I'm gonna put some other stuff on the table because this is, I'm realizing as I said this and I started writing the idea down for this topic, some other ideas brewed, some other ideas, thoughts came up. And I'm gonna to have to do some self-exposure here, not flashing, but, <laughs> but say some things because of my own journey. And I happened to watch a replay of one of my Facebook Lives from last year or the year before, where at that time I mentioned I'd been single for quite a long time and I'm like, now it's a year or two past that and I'm still single. And I start watching my own self-judgments come up, which is interesting. So this is an affirmation for me too, <laughs> to be totally blunt. Um, and I've been single for several years, partly because, well, let me get into that. Let me get into that in a minute. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Some people, I'm using, I use this, the same, same title again. Some people, um, <laughs> Let's just say that they don't think they exist if they're not in a relationship. And you know who those people are. Their life doesn't exist until they're in love with somebody. Their relationship is the um, validation of their experience, their existence sort of thing, which is, first of all, it's a lie. Secondly, it is a, um, what's what I'm looking for? Well, it is not It is a false approach. But the reality is most of the people who are doing that are actually afraid to be on their own. And in fact, that's where most of their life is missing because they think their life only exists because of somebody else being in it. Being single is not like, this, this analogy came up, let me play with it and see where it goes. The old, um, what do you call that? Metaphor? No, it's not metaphor. The word will come back to me. But this, the, the declaration that, you know, um, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it, does it really make a sound? In relationship, and I'm gonna, this is a reach, I know, <laughs> but in relationship, there is this sense that maybe if you're not in a relationship, do you really have any validity or existence, which is bullshit, to be blunt. And for a lot of people, as, an, as adults, and I know people have been married from like, they basically got married almost right out of high school from before they left their parents. They were married, settled down, had kids, and 25 years later, suddenly they're single for the first time in their lives. I don't know what to do with themselves. And so there's almost a fear that I better get back in relationship again because if I'm single, I don't know how to deal with life. Let me speak as the person who's been single a lot, a lot of my life. Yes, I'm a relationship coach who's been single a lot of my life and I've talked about that before, so there's no stranger to that information. But what I wanna say, frankly, is that as much as you can discover more about who you are when you're in a relationship, which for most people is actually something that's not even on the table. I'll get to that in a minute. Being single is where you get to experience autonomy. When you're single, you get to experience a lot of times your own freedom to do certain things which in a relationship may or may not be as easily, easily as available. Although I don't recommend being in relationships that take away your freedom by any means. But I wanna to speak to both pieces and I wanna go back to the piece about relationship for a second. I almost went down the path, but I'll get to it now, which is you learn more about yourself oftentimes around other people. So your interactions with other people, particularly in relationship, primary relationship, is gonna teach you often about yourself. Now, a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people, frankly, are caught up in the trap or the, um, what's we're looking for? 
the distraction that being with somebody else is enough. There's no need to deal with anything, there's no need to face anything, and we'll keep it all like, keep the status quo and be fine. In a relationship, frankly, if you are really willing to be in a relationship, there is an opportunity to grow and expand and become much more, um, what's I'm looking for, evolved, maybe is the word, than you would be otherwise. So yes, there are pros to being in a relationship if you choose it consciously. And if you choose a partner, you can do it consciously with. On the other hand, <laughs> being single is well, sometimes where you can do your most um, dynamic, certainly certainly experiential growth. I've, as I said, I've been single a lot of my life, adult life, and I've not been married before, and people have asked me like, well, why have you done this? Why have you done that? I've been very much immersed and, um, that's what I'm looking for, happy about being um, in the personal growth industry, participating in seminars, trainings, teachings, retreats, all sorts of stuff over the last 35 years. It's put me in a path where my life has changed perspective over the years. As I've said before, I'm, just a, I'm, I'm putting some very broad strokes on the table, but so don't take this as, as, as face value, just know there's more to it. But I've had over seven careers in my life. I know some of you out there have only a one, and that's what you're going to do until you retire, and that's the way it is, and anything more, that seems, seems so weird. Like, you, you're too flighty, you don't have, don't have clarity, or, you, or you're somehow not, not uh, standing in your mission, or whatever that is. Well, the truth was I didn't have my mission until recently. My work was always just what was in front of me, and I changed careers because I wasn't clear where I was going, but also because I was changing my own inner beingness over the years, becoming more aware of who I am as a human being. With the spiritual studies, and the master's program, and the spirit, being a spiritual counselor for 18 years, I really got to the place where my journey, my self-expression, my self-revelation, um, in a way, was priority. And so being in a relationship, sometimes in past relationships, I would experience where that would be, would be stifled. And that was not saying anything about them, it's about my choice of being in a relationship. Because what I noticed when I was in a relationship, that I would choose to think that I would need to say the same for them. And that was a mistake on my part, I know better now because I also choose relationships where I thought I have to be the same from when we meet to the all the way through the relationship, never change. That was a really challenging choice to make. But I've now discovered and learned over the years, certainly since then, that being true to myself and being true to my values and to keep evolving and growing on the path I'm on isn't about being better than anybody else. It's about being true to who I am. And to find somebody to be in partnership along that path isn't always easy. In fact, that's one of the challenges of doing this work, and I have acknowledged and owned, the, and owned up to that several times over the last several years, that the true path I've chosen on could put me in a place where I'd be single the rest of my life. And I'm not um, panicked by that. I used to be, <laughs> but not anymore. Because I realize for me, the work I'm doing, the service I bring, the teaching I bring, the support I give to my clients is more important then finding someone to settle down with. And that's another conversation about relationships being a place you settle down in because I so don't agree with that. Um, relationships, relationships should be, relationships, I suggest, are places where you settle up or you raise up or you step up into a higher place of being with a partner. That's the paradigm I teach and what I coach and what I share about, which is why some people are scared to work with me because <laughs> I'm not helping them find a date to be settling down with. I'm encouraging you to be your whole self so when you're in a relationship, you're not looking for someone to complete you. That's another conversation about um, codependence, which we've talked about several times recently. So being single, first of all, is a choice point that some people make to, be, to continue to stay on the path of growth. Now, some people choose to be, on, to be single because they're scared of being in a relationship. That's a different conversation. And if you're somebody who's scared of being in a relationship, I've got a whole wealth of knowledge to support you in choosing over that and help me heal that, that fear. So I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session so you can reach out and find out about what that would be like. Secondly, oftentimes people choose this relationship because it's convenient. A relationship with somebody they meet, they're, like, they're nice, let me get together with them and, and, and settle down. Again, that settled down the quote, which I keep using, but it's kind of in the vernacular of our, of our uh, culture. I believe that you should choose a relationship that you want to step into and raise the bar. Now, I may be in the minority about this. In fact, I'm sure I'm in the minority of the population, but amongst my community, people I know and, and I care about, I think we're all on the same page about this, or at least most of us are. 
The relationships are not just there to have sex and be comfortable. Those are part of it, if you're ideally, but you're also in the relationship to raise each other up and to grow with each other. And until you meet somebody you want to do that with, why keep dating somebody else? One of the things about being in a relationship is it's easier to be in a relationship, sorry, excuse me, it's easier to move into a relationship when you're already single. It's harder to move into a relationship when you're in a relationship with somebody else. As in, it's harder to move out of a relationship with somebody because you met somebody new. That's kind of like cheating in a way. Well, or leaving somebody for somebody else. That's a messy thing to do. And people do that in marriages all the time, unfortunately, especially, especially in modern times. But I'm talking about staying single and being, um, what's what I'm looking for? Confident in who you are and respecting who you are so you won't go and date somebody until you find the person you really want to be with. Patience is a virtue, in this area especially. And so what I'm putting on the table is a few ideas about how being single actually is a good thing. When you're doing it from a point of con when you're doing it from a conscious choice about choosing a relationship from a healthy place. There are some people out there who would deny this and argue with me until the end of the day. And I'm like, you know what? That's your choice. What I'm speaking to and I believe is a valid perspective. For those of you who are single out there, you may agree with me on this. And if you are someone who's single and, and scared of love, again I can help you with that. And if you're in a relationship looking at me as single and judging me because of that, that's your judgment. It's not bothering me. I'm clear about this now more than ever. And I was talking to a friend of mine last night, uh, who I hadn't seen in years, it was so much fun to catch up. And she was somebody who just ended a one-year relationship. And it's like, it isn't like, okay, I've got to find somebody and replace them. It's actually about being true to herself. And I agree with her totally, we're on the same page. That being aligned to your values and then choosing a relationship from there is a healthier place. They're giving up your values for a relationship. And some of you know what I mean. And some of you have made the price for that. I've done that in the past. So this little chat is really to con give you some food for thought and to consider for yourself where your priorities are and what are you choosing a relationship from? What qualities relationship are you really inviting in? Because some people, they're making the choice from convenience or comfort rather than from growth and opportunity to be more of who you can be. Relationships for me are a place to expand and grow, become more whole and to be more authentic in being who you are in partnership and partnership is a big word in my life in relationships because relationship is not about just somebody staying at home what you go do work go to work it's about how do you have a partnership in a relationship and that requires conscious choosing in by both partners and that's kind of one of my things in my work so a couple of things i recommend to you if you're someone who's been looking for love in all the wrong places i will put the link in the comments for a discovery session as i mentioned so we can talk and if you're actually not willing to um jump right in because you're scared of that experience or you've got past trauma from a relationship, please reach out to me. I'll put a link for that. Um, secondly, if you are single and you're feeling like the lack of love, what I recommend highly, I've talked about this many times and I did put together this little um, meditation practice, which is a self-love meditation practice. I'll put the link in the comments for that as well because if you're someone who is single and feeling like you could really flex some self-love muscles, this will help you with that. Self-love muscles, okay. That's what came through. Um, and thirdly, for the ladies in particular, if this is something where you're ready to have a relationship, but you want to get the vision clear before you jump right in, because that's what I'm talking about here is owning your own space and get clear what you really want before you just walk into somebody. It's like going to a car dealership and saying, whatever car's there, I'll take, versus going, no, I'm not, this is the car I want to get. So having focus and clarity is important for your relationship choices as much as it is for the car you want to get, if that's something you choose. <laughs> So I'll put a link in the comments for my Attract the Man You Want um, signature program that I have, because that might be of help to you as well. So I think I've made my points. And if you have questions or comments, please put them below in, in the after the video. This is a Facebook Live, by the way, on my personal page, 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. It also goes into my YouTube channel, and that's my podcast, and I'll give you the links for all of those. Um, personal page live at 5 p.m. is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. Feel free to join me live in my interactions every day of the week. Um, replay has gone to my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. YouTube channel, which is the channel, uh, sorry, my user handle is Barry Selby on, of course, on YouTube. Please find me there and subscribe. And you'll find on there a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. I think it's youtube.com forward slash user slash Barry Selby, I believe. 
And uh, thirdly, I'm also putting them onto my podcast, which you can also subscribe to, which is called Messages from the Masculine. And you can basically download the audios and listen to them when you want. And with that, I thank you for watching. This is my daily chat, generally in, in, intended to invoke, inspire, and provoke. Hopefully this has done one of those three for you, if not all three. And I do invite your comments and questions. So with that, I thank you for watching. Again, I'll put links in the comments for you to catch up with what I'm doing and I uh, appreciate being with me. For that, I'll see you again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, this is the weekend broadcast, hence the casual attire, so tomorrow will be Sunday. Um, I wish you a pleasant weekend and I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye.